Uh, so let's get started. Um, so the first thing I want everyone to kind of understand, right, is the whole concept of um, kind of like what a flowchart is, right? So we talked about flowcharts in class um, on Sunday, uh, sorry, on Saturday. And um, essentially, when you do a lot of generability questions, you'll start to see the questions as a flowchart sort of thing, right? So for example, the two main question types that you have, right? So you have these complete the pattern, or sorry, these find the next questions. That's a typo lol. Uh, it should be find the next questions, as you can see, find the next sort of questions. And then you have the complete the pattern type of questions, right? For each question type, there are usual, like they, there's, um, what do I say? There's uh, a set of common things that happen up all the time. So for example, um, every, whenever you see a complete the pattern question, you, you, you know that it could, that it could be where the first row and the second row add up to give you the third row. It could be the first column and the second column add up to give you the third column. It could be the first column minus the second column, giving you the third column, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So by doing a lot of questions, you start to see uh, commonalities or patterns within uh, the questions that we're doing. And um, you can start to like, you know, um, look for those things. Right. Um, sorry, can you please stop raising your hand? Um, I'll answer your question. If you could just send it in the chat because it is distracting on my screen. It keeps coming up. Thank you. Um, but I'll answer your question once we're finished. Once we're finished. Thank you. So um, as I was saying, uh, there's a lot of commonalities that keep coming up, right? Um, so when you're doing for generability questions, you can start to see, uh, start to look for those, right? So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Uh, Ruben, please don't on the screen. Thank you. So I'll give you an example here. This question, question number two here, right? The, this question, as you can see straight away, it's uh, made up of letters. When you do a lot of generability questions, you know that letters usually could mean sequence of letters, right? Where A is one, B is two, three, C is three, et cetera, et cetera. Or when you see letters, if you do a lot of generability questions, you know that it could be lines of symmetry, right? O has infinite line of symmetry. I has one line of two lines of symmetry, actually. C has zero line of symmetry, you know, lines of symmetry. Another thing that could happen with letters is the number of straight lines or the number of uh, curvy lines. Um, it could be the number of strokes, right? There could be a lot of, you know, different things that could come up in like common things that have like common patterns that come up in um, questions where there are letters. So when you do generability, what I want you to start to recognize is the more and more questions you do, right? the more and more patterns you have in the back of your mind to start, you know, implementing, to start using. So I'll give you an example um, of why that's really useful. Let me see. I'll give you, show you a physical example. So today, today um, I was fixing this thing here, right? So as you can see, this, um, little belt thing, you have to attach it using screwdrivers, right? So to do to fix it, you have to use a screwdriver. Now, when I first started, I had a very large screwdriver and that wouldn't, you know, open holes. So I had to go to the toolbox and find another tool, uh, screwdriver. But when you think about the toolbox analogy, there's so many different tools in it, right? There's a screwdriver, there's a spanner in there, there's different sizes of screwdrivers. Um, this is not a screwdriver, I think it's like a flat head thing. Um, I'm not big on tools, but you guys know what I'm trying to say, right? There's so many tools in there. And the thing is, the more tools you have in your toolbox, the more problems you can solve, right? Similarly with generability, by recognizing patterns or seeing common patterns, you can, uh, you know, essentially keep them in the back of your mind to, uh, like, sorry, to solve these questions later. Um, again, Sahid, um, I can see that your hands are raised. Could you send your question in the chat? because it's distracting the screen because it keeps popping up with notifications. Thank you. Just send your question in the chat. I'll try to answer it. All right, cool. Um, let me move everything. So there's just a lot of things popping up and it's just really distracting. Cool. So by, ha by ha you know, making a gen lot, gen lot of generability questions, but also having done a lot of generability questions, I have a lot of different tools in my head when I look at these questions, right? So as I mentioned, as soon as I see letter questions, I know what's happening here, right? Uh, let's take a look at another example. So here, 
Question number six. A lot of you guys, when you see these questions, um, you guys automatically know that, um, like you can start to see that the background changes colors, but it doesn't change color constantly, right? It changes kind of randomly. And what you expect is you like straight away, I can tell that what the, the colors from the triangle is going into the background, black going into the background. So it's only the gray that's moving to the background, right? And immediately I can start to see the gray goes here, it starts off here, sorry. And then from here, uh, so let me do a spotlight. Oh, what spotlight? Vanishing pen. So it starts off here, then it goes to the background, then it goes to this one, and then it goes to this one. So I'm assuming the next one goes here, right? So the answer has to be, uh, sorry, oops, it can't be A. Uh, it has to be B, C, or D, but I don't even have to look at the black one because I know that you can't have two grays. So it's not B and it's not D. So the answer is C, right? Um, so that's how you can do, you know, generability questions really fast. So in this question, as you guys saw, it essentially took me 10, 15 seconds to do it. It took longer because I had to explain it and say it. But in my head, when I look at it straight away, I can start to, you know, do it really, really fast. And the way to do it again, is to start having these flow charts or these uh, tools in your head. I'm not saying I'm going crazy. I'm just saying, you know, have these tools in your head uh, to apply them, right? That looks like I was going crazy, but yeah. Um, I'll show you another example where you can, you know, when you, you can recognize things really fast. So take a look at question number 15. You had a very similar question in the last mock exam. So when you see this question, you know, automatically, that it could be, for example, you know, as I mentioned, having done it, we know that it could be the pattern could be the number of squares to the first shape and the number of squares to the next shape and to the next shape. But when you do that, it doesn't make any sense. Then you know that it could be maybe the shapes could be moving diagonally, right? The spaces between. So plus one, one, two, three, four. Ah, uh, no, that doesn't make any sense. There's no diagonals here. No, that doesn't make any sense. Or what about the black one, black diamonds here? Oh, plus one. Uh, one, two, three, maybe, and then one, two, oh, sorry, plus one, and then plus one, two to here, maybe, and then one, two, three, that makes sense. So it's a plus one, plus two, plus three pattern for the diamonds. And then for the stars, when you look at it, mm, I don't know, not fully sure. But if we know that it's a plus one, plus two, plus three pattern for the diamond, then the diamond must be here. So the answer is D or C. And then even if we don't figure out what the pattern for the star is, we have a 50 50 percent of guessing what the answer is so um i know what the pattern of the star is which is essentially a star per column so in here we already have a star we already have a star here so it's not c the answer is d uh alina what's up nothing sorry nothing are you sure yeah okay cool um, in the future, guys, as I mentioned, if you have a question, just send uh, the questions in the chat, okay? Um, yep, I can see a lot of people raising their hands. Please send your questions in the chat just so that we can, uh, for the interest of time. Um, Hunter, so your question, what are the common patterns in letters? Uh, uh, common patterns in letters are letters as a sequence. So A is one, B is two, three is C. Another common pattern is lines of symmetry lines of symmetry how many lines of symmetry in a letter um it could be the number of straight lines number of uh curvy lines um it could be the, the um number of strokes um as well okay so now that you oh now that you've seen uh, uh you know you know memorize these patterns or like you know keep them in the back of your head oh here here's another good example um, as soon as you look at this question here, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to mute a few people. Yeah. So as soon as you take a look at question number 32 here, you see that it's a bunch of random shapes. So automatically I know if it's a bunch of random shapes where there's no movement going on, it must be the number of straight lines or it must be lines of symmetry or my lines, number of straight, like, you know, curvy lines, something, something like that. So, you know, I use that logic and try to solve it there. Okay. Uh, Hannah, good question. For gate, will we have bubble sheet like we do in the mock exam? Yes. So that's the whole reason why we made those bubble sheets for this term. So you guys get, um, you know, really good practice on how to actually use a bubble sheet. Now that you brought it up, there's a few things I want to talk about that. Thank you for bringing that up, Hannah. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> uh, 
Um, connect keypad trackpad. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure if all the bubbles will be on one sheet. It most likely would be uh, just for the interest of, uh, you know, for them to save time in scanning. Um, so it'll be most likely very similar to how it is right now. Um, Melvin, can we have a piece of blank paper and gate for working out for maths? Um, they don't give up blank paper and gate, so I can't give you any blank paper and or practice tests. Um, I'm pretty sure C does have a line of symmetry, just one, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, Melvin, yeah, they actually do give out um, um, blank pieces of worksheets for maths and stuff. Are you sure? Yeah. How do I you know? Last year. Uh, did you do the exam last year? Yeah. Okay. I'll double check. I'll ask. Uh, you only get like one emails. piece of paper though. Okay. I'll, I'll again, double check. From what I've talked to our old students and stuff, they said no blank paper, but maybe they've changed it last year. Not sure. So I'll ask them and let you know. Okay. Melvin. Yep. Um, can you uh, again, uh, guys, remember, send your questions in the chat. Thank you. Um, so, yes, Harry, I know exactly what you're going to ask me. Um, it's for the uh, masterclass sort of thing, right? Uh, What's yeah. going on here? Yep, so I'll send you that right now. What is this? Cancel. All right. So let me send that to you right now. So guys, all you, if you want to sign up for the uh, the masterclass thing, um, oh, the screen. Yeah, yeah. So all you got to do is go to loyalitutoring.org, go to courses, and it's right here. So you can register there, right there. Um, I'll send the link in the group chat now as well. Um, can parents come and stay at the masterclass? Yes, as I mentioned. Um, everyone, uh, your parents, if they'd like to come in, they can just because the, the auditorium that we booked, it's massive. It's got, you know, 300 seats in it and there's really about 170 kids coming. So there's about 130 seats. Uh, if, yeah, if my maths, is, my maths is right, 130 seats left. If parents would like to come in and take a seat at the back, um, they don't have to buy tickets. Um, so they can come in for free. Um, when is the, where is the masterclass? It's a Murdoch University. Melvin, can we do writing now? Sure. We, uh, one second. I need to, I want to go through a few more um, generability questions and then we will see what we do in the next half. Can they stay for the whole time? Sure, they can. Yeah. It's a Murdoch University. So uh, um, if you look at the photo that we've sent or um, here you go. I'll share with you guys. Resume share, new share. That's one. It's March 6th, 2022, 4 to 7 p.m. at the Kim Beasley Auditorium in Murdoch University. Um, as I mentioned in the class um, on Saturday with you guys, I 100%, 100% hands down recommend this. Um, this is by far the, the most fun thing you will do at Loyola. Like, trust me. It is definitely worth coming. All right, moving on. Uh, let's do a few of these questions. Um, if there's any specific questions you'd like me to do in generability, um, again, to use as an example to teach you guys sort of thing, um, send it in the chat, and then I'll choose which ones I want to go through. Oh, thank you, Nishad. Melvin? Yep. Um, will it like happen? Again, no, no, no. Kanchi, no, 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 no. I was very clear, Kanchi, several times today already. If you have questions, send it in the chat. Sorry. It's okay. Can I have a link to the group chat? What group chat are you saying? Can you send that invitation you should us? You should us, sorry. Um, I'll just send you the link. Here you go.
that's for the Loyola thing. And I'll also send you, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, yes, you should have your names on your, your notebook. Okay, uh, cool. So we have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, I'll see which ones are the most common ones and I'll go through some of them. Oh, oh, okay, Neharika, sorry. Um, okay, uh, by the way, before I move on, um, before, sorry, before I forget, as I mentioned, um, Hannah's question about the, um, well, what was Hannah's question again? Oh, about the bubble sheet. That raised a few important things that I want to talk to you guys about. The first important thing I want to talk about is um, regarding filling in the bubble sheets, right? And this uh, is a problem that happened with one of our other students who brought it up with me. Um, let me show it to you. So bubble sheet. Okay, I'll uh, screen share this. Perfect. So when, when you fill in your bubble sheets at the actual gate test, they take your papers and essentially your writing and your bubble sheets and everything, right? They put it in this huge scanning machine, right? Uh, Loyola, like at Loyola, we were thinking about buying one of those machines so that we can mark your writing, like your mock exams uh, ahead. Um, we couldn't find anything that's easily available to the public. I think if we look really, really hard, we could find something, but we just decided it just wasn't worth it. But um, big organizations like, you know, the Australian, sort of the Western Australian Education Department, um, when they do tests, they obviously have access to these machines. And all they have to do is put the, put your, you know, exam papers, put into the machine, It'll automatically um, scan all the bubbles in it. And then using a certain code, uh, I'm assuming it, it would give you a score automatically based on what's correct and incorrect. And that way that speeds up the whole process of marking, right? Because uh, last week I had to mark the Nolomara students. I had to mark every single one of their bubble sheets. Like it literally took me two, three days to mark it because it, it's just so time consuming to look at the answer, tick, 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 tick individually for how many questions are here. There's about 105 questions here, right? So marking 105 questions for 15 kids, that's about 500 and something questions, right? 560, how much is it? I don't know, 575 questions, right? Yeah. Okay. 575 questions or whatever um, to mark. So that took me a long time to do. So imagine if you're the gate marker, right? And you have 6,000 students to mark. 6,000. That'll take you a long time. So here's my tip. When you're shading in your answers, right? Do not, do not, for example, use a pen shaded in really dark and then you're like, oh, no, that's wrong. You know what? I'm going to shade this in. Oh, wait, this is wrong. Um, I'm just going to write down C as the answer here. No, that's not going to work. Because when they scan it, like a computer can't read this intelligently, right? So they won't do really well. Um, so make sure you, um, you know, you're, you're very careful in how you do it. Use a pencil very lightly, for example. A good tip that um, I tried to do again i wasn't very very consistent with this but what a lot of teachers would say is for example use a pencil and slightly put a dot next to b and then you know put uh you know whatever answers you have and when you're finished in the last one minute quickly you know fill that bubble in right so that way even if they rub it out it's very easy to rub out instead of you know filling it in really you know harshly and then rubbing it out because Sometimes with certain pencils, even if you rub it out, it will still have that stain on top of it. Do you guys understand? Yes. All right. That the next sense. thing I want to show you, this is, this is a horror story. All right. This is actually a horror story. Like when I, like, I, I'm not someone who gets scared watching horror movies, but when I saw this, I legit screamed because I got so scared. So I'll see if I can share this one second. Sorry, the internet is a bit slow. Oh. What was the name of the movie you're watching? Yeah. 
Is it the ring? Okay. Cool. Um, awesome. So, um, oh yeah, here's, I want to, I want you guys to take a look at this. So, uh, this is our Loyola group chat where we talk about, you know, uh, you guys and stuff. So one of the things, uh, we want to tell you guys about is if you don't write about the actual topic. So as this student, uh, hope you can't see the student's name, right? Good. So this student, uh, you know, for example, did pretty well in section two, pretty decent in section three. Um, but they did not write about the topic in the actual test. I'm pretty sure if you don't write about the topic, you will get a zero because imagine this, imagine someone asking you a maths question, like four plus four, and then you answer the question to eight plus nine, right? Sure. You got the answer correct for eight plus nine, but they didn't ask you eight plus nine. They asked you four plus four. Similarly in gate, when they give you a topic. So for example, in our mock exam, when we gave you this topic here, you need to talk about this topic. You can't talk about, for example, I don't know, doors for this mock exam, right? So if you don't answer the question that you got, you will get a zero, right? Sure, you might have a fantastic story. You might even publish that and become a world famous author, right? And make billions of dollars. But if you don't write about the topic, we can't give you marks. So please, a huge warning. Um, you will get a zero. Um, but what I wanted to show you was, oh yeah, I'll show the horror story. So let me find my chat with Jenny. Oh, it's not here. General, admin team. Nope, 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 nope. Random do we have we? Okay. So the, um, the Nolamara kids, as you can see, all your papers have been marked. So these are the marked ones that I just sent to Jenny. Maybe you shouldn't see them, but I want to show you guys something really scary. It's not this. Things I want to show you. Oh, it's not there as well. It's here. Uh, okay. Perfect. I just want to quickly have, okay. You can see the name, right? Perfect. This is a horror story. If you're not clear of what you're seeing, this student wrote in erasable pen. This paper was in my car as I drove home, right? And as I was driving home, we are in the middle of Australian summer. It's about 40 degrees and I have a black car. So my car gets really, really hot. Like it's really, really hot, right? And it's a really old car and the air conditioner is pretty bad, right? Because my car is about like 15 years old. I think my car is older than most of you guys. So because of the heat, this person's writing literally went blank. As you can see, you, you can't read it, right? Imagine this happening to you. You work really, really hard. You write an incredible story, but because you wrote it on erasable marker pen, and when they scanned it, the machine got really hot and your entire paper is just blank because it just went erased. That is scary. That is way scarier than any horror movie I've ever seen in my life, right? Like for me, the, some of the scary things happens. You know, one of the biggest scary things for me is I, I'm not a morning person. So I sometimes, you know, I find it really hard to wake up. Me and, me and Achut, the other tutor, we were talking about this. We constantly get scared that uh, we have, um, we, that, that, you know, we constantly get scared that we might sleep through the morning um, and we might miss your class. But this should be your nightmare, right? You should be scared that they can't read your writing. So do not, do not use erasable marker pen, okay? Use actual pen or pencil to write, okay? Do you guys understand? Yes. Open. How come I got a on one side? Yes. 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 Yes.
No. No. No, not really. Awesome. Stay up, uh, I have one. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Shoot. Why did you have that paper in your car? In my car? Because I drive. I can't walk all the way from Nolamar to my house. But why was that paper in your car? Sorry? Why was the paper? Because I collect it to mark it. But didn't you I give it back to the Sorry? owner? Okay. Why did you, didn't you give it back to the owner? No, I'm moving on now. Um, so, oh yeah, here you go. I just want to share this with you guys. So this is, uh, sorry. Um, not this. Let's go to the questions here. Perfect. All right. Um, okay, which question would you like me to go through? Oh, sorry, sorry, you did send me the questions. Let me take a look at the most common ones. All right, question eight seems really common that a lot of students send through. So let's try question eight really quickly. All right, oh, honestly, question A was pretty hard. Okay, this is another uh, test strategy that I'll tell you guys, right? My name is Melvin, I'm doing my gate exam um and i'm doing question eight all right so i'm scroll down all right so i'm looking at this question and i'm like all right so this is a grid question uh what sort of things happen in grid questions well usually the first column and the second column add up to give you the third column all right that makes sense or the first row and the second row add up to give you the third row hmm, that makes sense as well but let's try those out so first row and the next row that adding up to give you left line that doesn't really make any sense Hmm. Let's take a look at this. The left row and the middle row adding up to give you this. That doesn't make that much sense as well. All right. Maybe it could be the uh, columns, right? Sorry. Uh, so the that was the columns, but maybe it's the rows. This line and this line and this line giving you this line. What? Maybe this cancels out with this. I don't know. Sure. Uh, this line and this line give me a straight line. What? That doesn't make any sense. At this stage, ladies and gentlemen, what I will do is skip it because this is way too hard. This doesn't make any sense, right? There's no point in wasting your time because you have 20 minutes to do 35 questions. There are a lot more easier questions to do than this question here, right? But I'd like to explain how to do this question. And this question is again, ri ridiculously hard. Mm -hmm. and the way it works is this, this line, this line, plus this straight line, plus this vertical line gives me an asterisk. This line plus this vertical line here, plus this, uh, di sorry, diagonal and vertical line here, plus this horizontal line here gives me an asterisk. So... This line plus this vertical line. And we should have two more lines that gives me asterisks. So the answer has to be C. That was a crazy hard question. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's um, faces don't. Yes. What's, the yes. you'll, what's the probability yeah. you'll see that pattern in the actual gate test in time? Very low, honestly. Unless you have a crazy good mind uh, where you're able to see incredible patterns. Um, most students will not see that pattern. It'll just take way too long. So if I were you, you would just skip that question. There's uh, another way to do that question. Sure. Do you want to send it in the chat? Uh, sure. Um, I understand there's another way to do it. Sure. Send it in the chat. Uh, so it's logical thinking. Yep. Why are the see. smiley faces? Oh, they're just random. Every row has a smiley face in the same location. Um, I can't. Yeah. That's a very philosophical question. Why? Why is there a smiley face? I, I I don't know. What is the meaning of life? I don't know. Um. Let's see. What are the questions that are common? Three, four, seven. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. How do you message on the chat? Sorry? How do you actually message on the chat? Um, so it should be at the bottom of your screen. There should be a message button saying chat. So if you press that, you can send a message. All right. So next question I got. Uh, let's take a look at question number three. My class where I go to, they wrote, um, and half of the half of the story was gone. So I think it's okay. So, um, all right. So let's uh, clear the screen here. Um, so let's take a look at this uh, pat- question number f- three here um, first. So as you can see, uh, question number three, there is four. Um, so it's a good question. And based on this question, and just looking at it straight away, I know that it's basically there's four locations and the black color is just moving up and down, right? So let's see if it's uh, maybe, you know, Going across the row. The pattern's going across the row. So it starts off on the first one, then plus two to the third one, then plus one to the fourth one. So it's plus two and plus one here. Cool. Last row, it's starts at the very fourth one, then plus one, two to the second one, then plus one to the third one. Okay. So the pattern seems to be plus two, plus one. So in here, let's see, plus two to the last one. Good. Next one should be plus one. So I know the answer has to be A or C. But we have two answers. How do we decide? Well, if you look carefully, there's always one shape that is, you know, brought to the very front. And the first image is the third one. And the second image is the fourth one. And then it's the first one. So as I can see, it's going plus one, plus one, plus one each time. Cool. Let's look at the last one here. It's the first one. Then it's the second one. And then it's the third one. Plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. So in this question, it's the third one, then it's, sorry, it's the second one here, and there's the third one that's the front. So the answer has to be the fourth one in front. So the answer must be C. Okay. Um, next, let's take a look at question number 22. Um, can you explain it again? Um, unfortunately not, just for the interest of time, check out the YouTube video and go back to where we started this question. Um, yes, that's right. Um, okay. So one second, uh, question number 22, is it? Okay, yeah, 22, perfect. Sorry guys, I know there's a lot of questions in the chat. Um, I'll try to get through as many as I can. Um, okay, question 22. Again, it's a grid top question. So I'm gonna start by maybe potentially overlapping first. So maybe the first column and the second column gives me the third column. Let's see. Um, one, two, one, two, and then what? The diagonal went missing. Mm. Ah, I think what's happening is the third column and the second column add up to give you the first column, but whatever overlaps goes missing maybe. So this line overlaps with this and that goes missing. But then what happens to the third line here? Um, hmm, that doesn't make any sense. Or maybe it's the you know rows here. So this shape plus this shape gives me this shape. That makes sense. Middle two lines here. And that two gives me that, perfect. This thing here and these two here gives me that, perfect. So what's happening is the top uh, row plus the middle row gives me the bottom row, but anything that overlaps disappears. So as you can see, um, this middle line, uh, sorry, this vertical line and this vertical line overlap. So that goes missing here. In this row here, this diagonal, so this diagonal line and this diagonal line overlap, and that goes missing. 
So the next image we have one, two, three, one, two, three. They all overlap. So only the middle line should exist. So the answer has to be C or D. And what else? We have a moon here, a moon here, moon here, moon here. So that means I think what's happening is there should be a moon in every single corner. Moon at the bottom left, uh, top right, top left, bottom right. Perfect. Bottom left, bottom right, top left. Next one should be top right. The answer is D. Okay. So do you guys see how we solve these questions logically? Yes. Uh, yes. Step step. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Melvin, did you make the questions? No. So these generability questions were made with, by Jenny and um, this other guy called Agni. Um, he is studying at UWA, uh, sorry, Curtin right now. He's studying to be an actuarial. An actuarial is the really f like fancy data analyst, essentially. So, for example, they use a lot of complicated maths and a lot of uh, formulas to figure out probabilities, essentially, of real-world situations. So, for example, insurance companies need actuaries to figure out how much to charge for insurance. Like that. So, he helps to make those questions as well. Um, okay. Cool. Yes, they're pretty smart. That's why we hired them. Uh, um, Niharika. Okay, so we only have nine minutes left. Well, I'll give you guys your five-minute break in about four minutes. But if you have any of the questions in the chat, I want to try to answer a few of the questions that you have. Um, Alan, your question, what is the masterclass? Okay, essentially, guys, every year we have this event um, where we teach you guys, it's like, you know, life skills. Oh, actually, speaking of Alan, who asked the question, he's missing. I'll just add him back to the chat. Why does this guy keep going away? Alan, can you hear us? Yes. Why do you keep disappearing, bro? You keep I have to keep adding you back. Hello? Uh, I was just checking something. Okay. Um, please make sure that, uh, j just for everyone else in the future, unless your computer glitches or something, please stop leaving the chat because it's distracting. But Alan, I was going to, I was about just literally answering your question about the masterclass and what it is. Um, basically, yeah, so every year we have uh, this event. Um, last year, we, for last year's students, we had it actually slightly earlier. We had it in term three. Um, and that was uh, basically where we, um, in, in that session, we actually had, two different people coming in and it wasn't it wasn't for the actual gate test it was just general but this session that we're having is specifically for the gate test so we'll have two sessions at the stage session one is with jenny and maria where they'll go through a few tests you know test taking skills strategies on how to do better in tests and stuff like that and then the second session is thank you Second session is uh, me and it'll just be like a fun slash motivational session because one of the worst things that we've seen a lot of students um, do, especially smart kids like you guys do is you study really hard, but on the day of the test, you get stressed out, right? And we've seen this in our actual classes. Um, last term and the term before we had this one student, um, I'll ask him if he would like me to say his name, but he got essentially the highest score in the mock exams, right? Wait, let me see if he's in the chat right now. Yeah, he's not he's not in the group chat today. So I'm not gonna say his name. But he got the he he got the top mock exam score or the top five. He was in the top five, I think. Really smart kid, right? Really smart kid. Um, but the problem was whenever we did the mock exams in the previous terms, this term he was fine. But in term four last year and term three last year. Because the exam stress got to him, he broke down and started crying, right? And we had a lot of students and a lot of parents told us that some of the kids get stressed out. For us as tutors, it's a hard decision to make, right? We want to make sure that we give you questions uh, that are difficult enough, that are reasonable, right? So for example, um, if you take a look at some of these questions here, and if you look at the sample gate test, you can see that our questions are very similar to the actual gate test. Um, I know some of you, for example, go to other gate tuitions, right? Recently, I had a chance to look at question papers from other tutoring companies. I'm not going to name any names. Um, but if you look at other tutoring companies and their sample questions and look at the sample test itself, 
you can see that they are pretty useless. They're, they're not the same questions, right? Um, I'm not saying the questions are bad. I'm just saying they're not useful for the gate test, right? For example, the screwdriver is not bad just because it can't open up my car. It's just not made for that, right? So as tutors, uh, we want to make sure that we give the best questions possible. But at the same time, it, we kind of feel, um, we sorry, we, we do feel a bit um, guilty when we give you guys such hard questions, right? And students get really stressed out. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that we help sure that you guys are in the right mindset, you know, refreshed and motivated before the gate test. So that second session is all about that. Um, so on the day, you will have uh, the testing skills, you have the motivation class, and also um, for all the new students who don't know of this yet, we have a note-taking competition that's going on. So the students who take the best decorated notebook, no, like notes, and essentially the best decorated notebook will win a prize. We have three prizes, first, second, and third. Um, I'll tell you what one of the prizes is, but I can't tell you what the other two are because it's a prize. The first prize, sorry, not the first prize, but one of the prizes is a camera. It's a Polaroid camera, you know, those photos where you can take it and immediately pops out a photo. So it's like that. So make sure you take really good notes, decorate it, right? Make it really beautiful. Melvin? Yep. Sorry to disturb, but um, with the note taking competition, mm -hmm. will we get to keep the notebooks afterwards? Yeah, yeah. It's yours forever. That's good because I used one of my own ones. Oh, okay. No stress. Melvin. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, so um, that's essentially what the uh, event is. Um, I've shared the link to you guys, but you can register through the Loyola Tutoring website. Just go to the Loyola Tutoring website, click courses, go to register now, um, and you can register here. Um, it also shows you the itinerary of what's happening on the day. So as you can see, um, there's all these different events going on um different things happening there's a surprise at the end i can't tell you what that is but um, there's two tickets right now there's the early bird for 19 dollars and the late registration for 39 dollars. make sure you jump in early because if you book late you will have to pay the extra free the main reason is if you book early we know exactly how many things to order and things like that for us it makes things easier um just heads up there's no food or anything um because it's just a headache managing all the food allergies and things like that but um, there's a bunch of other things that we need to look out for. So if you book early in the next week, you get the early bird price. Oh, so you don't have to pay for this. Um, and then what else? Is there a limit to students who can register for the thing? Uh, no, everyone can come. So we have a, we booked a huge auditorium. So it's in Murdoch University for 300 people. So literally everyone can come. Um, how many master classes are there? Just one. What time is it? It's from four to seven. Well, 345, we open the gate so you can come in and go. Um, why do you have a screwdriver on your desk? Uh, as I was, as it was, I was doing something earlier. Do you have any tips to manage time limit? We'll talk about that in the future classes. Okay. Is your book, if your book is decorative, but has less notes, would you get the price? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good balance, right? You need to have both good notes and decorated notes. What if your notes are digital? That's a bit harder because how are you going to see those digital notes unless you print them out? Um, do you have to be part of the note-taking competition? You don't have to be part of it. Can you bring food? Um, just eat food before you come and then have it after. It's only three hours. So what day is it? Yeah. Um, what day is it? March 6th. How many classes are there? Just one. What day is it? Sunday, 6th of March. When is the due date for the registration? Essentially by the end of the week, if you want the early bird for it's pretty much half the price. Do we have to pass the gate to get into Perth mod? Yes, you do. Do you know the gate venues? Um, so it really depends, Katie. Um, for example, I did my gate test in Villetin Senior High School purely because I was living in Villetin, but it really depends on which suburb you live in. So they will email each of you where you will do the test. How do you look at your notes? Uh, we will look at your notes in the final week of the class where you bring it into class. Sorry, we will tell you which week to bring the notes in. Melvin at six, cool. What if your book, yeah, I've answered that, cool. Is there any other way to get into Perth mod? Um, I think the other way to get into Perth mod is, um, there's this thing called, uh, have you guys seen this schema? 
So you wear one of these ski masks, right? And then you get a bolt cutter. And then in the middle of the night, you jump the, you go to the fence and then you cut the lock and then you jump over the fence. And then that's how, that's another way you can get in the gate, into Perth mod. So if you don't pass the gate test, um, this is something else we do. Um, if you guys want tutoring on how to get into Perth mod using this method, unfortunately Loyola doesn't do that. But I know that the local prison here has lots of experts who can teach you how to do that. <laughs> but yeah. Very funny, Melvin. Very. All right. You told me you would give me a notebook, but I think you forgot. Oh, so sorry. We do have heaps of notebooks in the office. So just remember me next week. I'll get you one. All right. I have to head off now, guys. Um, so I'll see you guys next oh, week. Man, are we still doing the puppets? Like the, um, I, have, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Melvin. 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 I have no idea. We are. Yes. We are. We are. We are. Melvin. I have no idea. I have Melvin. no idea. We're doing puppets. Je ne sais pas. Yes. 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 Who's screaming? You haven't answered my question. What's your question? Ah! Um. Do you know the link to the sample papers for the gate test? Oh, sure. I'll send it right now. Thanks. Um, Melvin. Yeah. Um, can I send my digital notes to you? Like yes. when the time is? That's right. You can do that. Okay. Um, Melvin. Yeah. Melvin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, um, I, my notes I'm transferring to another book. Is that fine? Sure. As long as you show it to us on the day. Okay. Thank you. Melvin. Yes. When is the gate exam? Uh, 12th of March. Thank you. Uh, can you share a few more sample writings? I will share them. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Yes. Bye. Um, can we can we actually say can I send you a um digital like notes? Sure. Um, I prefer okay. per, like in person, but if you'd like to do digital, that's fine. So just remember to show it to me if you want to be in the prize sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, because it's like um, because they're on keynote and stuff. Yeah, no stress. But if it's on keynotes, can you decorate it? It's kind of decorated there, anyway. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, bye, Melvin. Bye, Melvin. Bye, Melvin. Bye, Melvin. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Melvin. Bye, Melvin. Bye, Melvin. Melvin. Bye, bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you next week, Melvin. See you next week. He literally left. Stop saying bye. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi, Hi Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi, Hey, guys. Hello. How is everybody doing? Let me get the chat set up. How are you, Maria? I am good. I am currently a little bit sick, but not like sick, sick. I'm having a bad day with my eyes and my eyes keep going all over the place, but it's all good in the food. I'm out here living my best life, teaching English, so I can't complain. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean by your eyes going all over the place? Um, I have a bit of a blind issue, so I sometimes can't control my eyes. They just kind of like, have you ever seen a lazy eye? Like one eye remains straight and then the other one goes to the corner. Like no. I can do that, except it'll do it for both because I'm trying to focus on what's in front of me. Oh. It's like gross to look at, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, are Mario. you back for a five minute break? No, no, no. Developing a lazy eye. So Melvin, just um, no, no five minute break today then. Yes, we want a break. What? No, okay, awesome. We'll, we'll pretty much start at six or five, so no, no stress. Um, just a little housekeeping. Again, I'm gonna do the whole hands up thing. I don't want to deal with calling out. Um, another thing is I was listening to the end of Melvin's um, Zoom call, Zoom session with you guys, and he's talking about the note taking competition. Um, I think a while ago, I went through some note taking tips with you guys and how to make your pages a little bit prettier. But I hope you all, all of you, 
uh, participating because, you know, the prizes, I think they're going to be very exciting. Hint, hint, very exciting. So I suggest, you know, give it your best shot. And if you need some pointers or some tips, ask me at the end of the lesson because I, I love the competitive nature and I love the art stuff anyway. So it should be all good. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. I love it when people love my notes because honestly, my handwriting has just gotten progressively worse. Um, Harry, don't worry. I got my booster shot too. And I'm a bit like, ooh, so it's okay. You are more than welcome to leave if you don't feel well. I am almost positive gate will be on paper. You will not be typing gate. If anybody has a contradiction to that, let me know. Um, okay, I there are already hands up. I'm assuming that they're for English questions. Okay, uh, we'll start off with Yasana. Yasna? Oh, nope. um, I don't have a question. That's okay. Elena, do you have a question or is your hand up? No. Maria? Uh-huh. Oh, it was from the other um, Melvin's thing. That's okay. Um, uh, okay, does anybody have an English-related question to hit? Um, Hadia, no, I don't think you need to print your notes, but you can send it to Melvin. I'm pretty sure he'll look at it if you send it to him. Okay, so anyways, guys, uh, I'm pretty much going to start and I'll come back to the question. So please, please, please hold your thoughts and we'll get back to it. So pretty much uh, the comprehension that you guys would have gotten this week, I felt like they were, um, they were pretty... They're pretty okay. They're pretty well well rounded, but I don't know what you guys thought about them. Uh, does I would like to go through the questions because the majority of them this this uh, this week or Mox three were lexical questions and uh, pretty much literal questions as well. Um, and I wanted to go through some lexical strategies because I noticed a lot of people were getting the lexical questions incorrect purely because one lack of vocabulary. Two, unable to make connections between basic synonyms yeah. and complex words. And three, uh, not reading the text properly. Okay, so we'll go through that today. Does anybody have any questions about this week's or what marks three's comprehension that they would like to ask me before I begin? If not, please lower your hand and I will get back to you. Um, Navazi, she have a question about the comprehension from this week? Um, yeah, for the, um, question, for the, um, racism occurs to human rights, I, um, didn't really understand, um, the question, um, you didn't the, understand the question, and um, not understand. Um, I didn't get the answer. Oh, okay. I, Wait for which one? Question. What you have to tell me the question. I don't have the numbers. Yeah. Um. Question thirty-three. I didn't get the answer for reading for question thirty-three. Oh no no no! That's it. I don't have the numbers. You have to read me the question. Which of the following is true? Uh, which of the following is true? The answer should have been international laws will eventually help. Oh, no, sorry. Um, racism is only experienced in 12 countries around the world. All right, let me just get the answer key out because I'm still struggling. And it's the racism one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that should be one, two, three. Question three is C. Which of the following is true, you said, right? Yeah. The answer should be it makes it hard for people to trust. 
or feel comfortable in social situations, I think. Yeah, there it is. Racism can prevent you from being able to feel comfortable in social situations. That A was the correct answer there. All right. Um, no problem. Uh, Shrib. Uh, about my question, uh, what's the best like strategy to use in writing? Okay, like what, similes does or that metaphor? have like anything to do with comprehension? No. <laughs> yeah, we have to do comprehension questions first. Hold your questions that are unrelated okay. to to the end. Okay. Okay, Via question. Wait, did you say my? Did you say my name? I couldn't hear you. I said Via, V E E R. I'll get to you later, Via. Oh, my name. Um, yeah, how would I say your name? Are you saying it right? Um, I. That's not. Um, do you have to call me Arjun? Arjun. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, what's your question? Uh, I don't have one. Okay. Oh, your hands up. All right, Via, your oh, okay. name. Okay. So. Okay. So um, I. I for question A um in comprehension I'm a little bit struggled with. So I just send you the question in the chat for you to uh, see. Will you just know what question it is? Question A. So is that number two for Pandora? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I do um Abia, what was your question? So I do not know which one it is. I just I just chose A, but what is the correct answer? For, like I chose it should be D. Okay. Can you please have a little bit explanation why? I need to know what the question is. I don't actually know. Oh, the gods also bequeath her with numerous other gifts. Replace bequeath in this sentence. Oh, okay, superb. So your question kind of relates to what we're about to do anyways. So let me just find out where my Zoom screen is because I'm just like not good with tech. All right, there are two people waiting. They can come in. All right, so pretty much, uh, Abia, the, que the question, the word within the question was bequeath. Yeah. No. So that was how we say the word. Now, when we, I'm going to give you a description to it anyways, but bequeath pretty much means to leave something by will. So someone like a grandparent passes away in their will, they might leave you their jewelry or something that they want you to have that is yours because the will has said it is yours. Okay. Okay. That's what the queen means. So pretty much, I feel like a lot of people would have gotten that question wrong because they would have chosen the word gifted. But the main strategy to remember there is that you need to be reading the words in the passage. So it shouldn't be, now if I am correct, it shouldn't be, uh, it should be, what was it? The gods with her with numerous other gifts or something like that. And in the, uh, when we read that, it should sound like, or it shouldn't sound like, the gods gifted her with numerous other gifts. Now, grammatically, we know that we are not allowed to use the same word in a sentence because it sounds odd. But furthering that, gifted and bequeath are not uh, synonyms of one another. If bequeath means to leave something by will, that's not a lift. That's not a will. Uh, sorry, that's not a gift. My words again, apologies. That's not a gift. That is something that you must look over. Whatever they give you, you must look over. It's not like, oh, it's a birthday gift. Keep it for later. It's going to benefit you. They could leave you something good or bad. What they gave Pandora was good. So it's not necessarily something to do with just gifts, okay? Um, but I'll go through the actual strategy for it and how you can practice it. Uh, I feel like people are struggling with their vocabulary because I'm not seeing any like your seven, your eight, and your nine uh, vocabulary in the creative writing, and that's okay. So pretty much I've left some year nine vocab on the side there. Now, the reason I've left the vocab there is because I want you to be able to identify their basic synonyms, their basic synonyms for what you understand for your year level. So a word like escalate for you might be like, oh, going up pretty much, 
it would not be, oh, escalate, becoming more intense or anything like that. So find the basic synonym and then build your vocabulary around that. So lexical pretty much comes from the word lexicology and lexicology is the study of the behavior of words. So how words are acting in a sentence, all right? And we know that one of the things that words can't do, we can't have the same word we can't, in a sentence. We cannot gift gifts when it is not a synonym of the word we are trying to replace pretty much. Normally you can gift a gift, but even then that just sounds a little bit odd. Okay, so lexical questions are any vocabulary based questions and they would have been around 80% of the questions you were asked this mocks pretty much mocks three. There was the one in the cosmic energy, the tale of two frogs. Um, the racism one didn't have that much uh, vocabulary that you really had to focus on, but all the other question sets did like a lot like I think one of the words people struggled with for the cosmic energy one was unfettered unfettered means unrestricted if anybody was curious so um i know that a lot of people struggled with that sorry let me just mute everybody okay so the strategy i want to teach you guys it is not something you can do on the day it is just how you can practice also somebody is unmuted can you make sure that everybody is muted please okay so Pretty much what you want to do is you want to pick five or six, year seven, year eight, or year nine words. It can be a combination. Of, okay. Then step two is I want you to define those words in your own, uh, define those spelling words in your own words, pretty much. So you get the original definition and then you define it in your own words. After that, step three is I want you to collect a synonym and an antonym for each of these words. Why would you want one of each? Well, because you know that in question sets, you can get asked the synonym or you can get asked the antonym. Sometimes you may be asked to write the antonym of a word in replacement of a, in a sentence. You haven't gotten a question like that before, but um, you never know, maybe next marks, next mocks not that I'm allowed to tell you anything but I'm just saying you never know um step number four is to write out a complex sentence or a short passage with the spelling word and step number five is to replace that spelling word with a synonym that makes sense in the sentence okay now this is like quite compiled and there's a reason for that if you practice this every day or maybe every second day, I know that you guys have lots to do, your vocabulary will improve in a very short period of time. You are looking to maximize your opportunities as much as you can in the next, what, three to four weeks, three weeks? Um, so, which is why the strategy works. I have done it since I was in year six. Um, so, and I did it up until year 12, so I highly recommend it. Also, guys, I'm not going to give you the definitions of words like I've been repeating in most classes. I want you to do some active learning. If there is a word you don't understand from the question sets, please whack out either a dictionary or go onto Google and define it because I want to give you the strategies, not the definitions. Okay, now here is a worked example of how you would practice that. If the word is bequeathed, we know that the definition is to leave a person by will. OK, uh, leave something to a person by will. My own words, it is to leave something to someone. The synonym, direct synonym is entrust. Was entrust an option in the A, B, C or D? Yes, pretty much. Um, after that, the antonym is keep or receive. Now, the complex sentence that I decided to go with was she had always been proud of the life she had lived, grateful that her mum had bequeathed her with the gifts of humility, consideration, and kindness that knew no bounds. Number five, I want to replace the word in the sentence that I've written with a synonym, okay? Just to make sure that it makes sense, to really understand it. She had always been proud of the life she had lived, grateful that her mum had entrusted her with the gifts of humility, consideration, and a kindness that knew no bounds. Now, one of the things you must recognize with the synonyms you choose is that they must make sense within the sentence. So make sure you read the options within the passage and see which one sounds the best. 
okay? Now, that is pretty much the only strategy I have in terms of improving vocabulary in a short period of time. Look, say, copyright check does not work because you do not understand how to properly implement the word in a sentence. If you practice this, I promise you your vocab will improve. If you are looking for vocabulary words, what I did today and where I get most of my words from when I'm writing comprehension sets is I Google year nine vocabulary lists and all the words that I might put into my comprehension sets when I'm practicing, when I'm even writing my own creative stories, it all comes from there. Um, also, guys, don't worry about apologizing to me when you're like, can I have a definition or anything like that? And I say no. It's more so I just really, really want you guys to maximize your learning opportunities. So I won't answer particular questions because I want you to go and active learn. Okay, so let me go through a couple questions in the chat to make sure that I haven't like glimpsed through everything. And then I'll take the hands up. Mm -hmm. What is the answer? Uh, it should be... Um, so that question with the word bequeath, the answer should be entrusted. I'm not sure if that's A, B, C, or D. Uh, Marianne, where's part one? Uh, Nishad, part one was done quite a while ago. Literal questions have been taught in a previous YouTube. Um, I think a brief explanation was given and it was based on the Cleopatra text, okay? Um, do, 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 do. Again, guys, I'm not sure when the pages will come through on the chat. It's quite difficult because my file sizes are astronomical. Now, I like Quizlet to study, but the, when it comes to English, I would say that English is a lot of practice. You must be able to practice the concepts. It's one thing for me to sit here each week and teach you something, but if you do not screenshot and actually practice these strategies, it's not likely it will stick with you. Um, unfortunately, Abia, you do not get dictionaries in the gate exam. I wish. All right. Da, 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 da. Uh, Atvik, yes, definitely take the words on the side and work on them. I think that they are very good for creative writing, persuasive writing, and formal writing in any other form. Um, also, I know that people have been wanting to mark work. I am no longer marking any work purely because um, I just am, am not due to the fact that I have to be fully focused on teaching right now. Oh, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, again, I cannot send it into the group because my file sizes are astronomical. Apologies. Okay, now moving on. The next pretty much why you wanna be practicing that strategy. I hope everyone took a screenshot of that. I will go back at the end, but if you haven't, it's too late now. Okay, Mario. why you wanna practice like that is it teaches you vocab that you can use to make connections between the vocabs you know and more complex words. So perhaps even if you don't end up using this in gate, your vocabulary will extend and then help you in that plan next year. So. It improves the cohesiveness of your writing and you are forced to choose synonyms that you that make sense in the sentence. So um, cohesiveness pretty much relates to your grammar and punctuation. When you are writing, it is no point having a decent creative text, right? Like you've used a bunch of figurative language, you've used some descriptive language. What did I do? Maria, you've paused. Whoa, okay, can everybody, is everybody still on? My Wi-Fi like disconnected for like. I know, I have no idea what you said for the last five minutes. Oh, okay. Fantastic. My, like, my house is like a bit of a storm. So my Wi-Fi has not been, been cooperating. So give me a second and I will get back to you. Okay. So pretty much what I'm saying is that it's no point me, um, Oh, no. So one of the things that I was mentioning before is the fact that that exercise that I taught you 
it's focused on cohesiveness, right? As well, which pretty much improves the standard of your creative writing. When we creative write, it's no point having all this amazing figurative language, all these bigger words, if your sentences don't actually make sense, okay? If you have um, a paragraph that's just full of short sentences that are very basic, it's going to negatively impact your overall grade. So what this exercise teaches you is how to properly implement vocabulary into your passages. Now, if you give me a second, I'll be able to reconnect my iPad and show you the rest of the stuff we'll be going through today. Um, Does anyone know how to screenshot? On what? Do you have Windows? I'm on a oh, Mac. you have to have. Are you using a MacBook? Computer? PC? No. no. iPad? Tablet? Yes. You have to um, hold the off button and the home button and click it together. Like just press it simultaneously. You just have to press the home and the off button once and then it should screenshot. It's not, um, it keeps coming to power off. And Don't it, hold it, just press it. Don't hold it, just click it. Simultaneously um, click it. Um, Guppy, I'll get to you in a second. I really just need to reconnect my iPad so I can continue with the lesson, okay? Give me a second. Hopefully it works now. It didn't work. That's a bit irritating. Anyways, guys, um, it looks like my iPad is just not gonna cooperate with us for a little bit. So I'm gonna keep going. All right, I'm gonna go through the questions in the chat. So any questions you have about comprehension, just whack them in now while my iPad isn't working because the lesson has been disrupted anyways. So let's go through comprehension questions only. Guppy, what was your question? Well, question 12, mm -hmm. did humanity deserve to be punished? So is D, but it can also be a little of B, but how is it like really D? Okay, well, uh, the answer should have been that, wait, 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 it's D. I, I really thought that the answer was B, the fact that no, um, I thought B was no one should have been punished. Uh, no, sorry. Um, what's the guy who stole the fire? His name? The guy who stole Prometheus. it should have been. Prometheus. Prometheus. Prometheus, thank you guys. Yes, the answer should have been humanity shouldn't have been punished. Prometheus should have. So whichever answer says Prometheus should have been punished is the correct one. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. So, um, Guppy, you're done. Question. Donna, if you have your question up. Um, can we go through question 14? Question 14. Again, Donna, guys, if you say 14, I'm not going to know what it is. Say the, the text. Cosmic set energy. And cosmic energy. That I can definitely help with, I think, if you give me two seconds. Um, cosmic energy. Can you read the question out to me? Cosmic energy is... Oh, describing it. Is that number one? No, it's um, number... It's the second one down from the text of cosmic energy. Down from this. So what are your options for that? Uh, A, the peace we encounter. B, the balance we need. C, the life force that exists around us. D, none of the above. Um, yeah, look, I'm going to need the text for that. So hold on. Let me just find it and I will, there we go. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. So cosmic energy is a piece we encounter to advance me, the life force that exists all around us. B, the life force that exists all around us. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, you said question 15. 
Blissfulness can be replaced with chirpiness. Question 18. The text purpose is, guys, if you say 18, I'm not going to know. You actually have to type out the what set the question is. You have to be like, oh, it's cosmic energy and it is number four in cosmic energy or whatever. And, I'll, and read out the question to me because I don't have it. I'm basing this off memory and a few things that I've written, okay? okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so question 18 was what, guys? Nope. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? My <gasps> Wi-Fi is working again. Give me two seconds. No audio. That's a very stressful few moments in my life. I want you all to know that. All right. Anyways, someone asked me whether it's not too late. Is it too late to improve the gate? Absolutely not. You have uh, an abundance of time. You pretty much have like a month left. So that is plenty of time to work on your comprehension skills, your creative writing, the developing your characters, developing your figurative language. Absolutely. There is still so much time to improve. All right. Ardik, you have your hand up. Thank you. We're not calling out. Um... For the, uh, because I could not stop for death, um, text, mm -hmm. um, the first question, uh, I got C, but it was marked, um, wrong. So, um, wait, yes, the, I did notice there was a problem with that question because in the answer key that I wrote, um, just the way that the text was organized, hold on, it should have been. Death, death, death. It should have been A for question one. Or uh, under because I could not stop for depth question. For the. Yeah, okay. uh, what can you read the question out for me? Death has. Maria? I've in the poem as. Death has been described in the poem as. All right. It is A for question one. Um, it's so it is question one. I think that it's definitely A. It should be a, a person? That's D. Oh, then it should be, yeah. So that was a question where the answer was a person, but the answer key said it was A. And that's probably on me. I must have misprinted it. But yes, every person is correct. Um, it is most definitely not an animal or whatever a was at the time. And why? Um, why but, the so it is right. Um, the like the answer for question one is. Why is it a person? Okay. Well, uh, give me a sec because I don't actually have the text in front of me. This is probably one where I don't have the text, and I will not have the text for a while. Okay. Why is the answer C? Or D, sorry. Um, I'd like just read the question out very quickly. Death has been described in the poem as. Death is described as, all right. And what are your options that you're provided? A, an animal, B, as a child, C, a carriage, D, a person. It should be D, a person. Um, the reason it's a person is because he, it could not stop for me, right? It's because death sits within the carriage pretty much. Does that, uh, okay, hold on. I need to get the text out. So I might need to, oh, uh, got it. Okay, so pretty much the beginning of the text says, the carriage held but ourselves. Do you see line two in the text? The carriage yeah. held but ourselves. So that means it pretty much gets rid of carriage and child and animal. We know that we know that death is old because it's something that has existed for like ever. People die. That's not something we can control. It's not an animal. There's no way it's an animal because it says I first surmised the horse's head and the carriage was being pulled by horses at one point. Nope, I think I took that out. But the 
the thing is that we know it's not C because a carriage, it said the carriage held but ourselves, meaning there were two people in the carriage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And for, yes. the, for the next question. Yes. Uh, what was it at? Because I got C. Um, why does the author mention certain places, Advik? Is that the one? Yeah. Okay, the author mentioned certain places because they are of significance to her. Okay. Because we don't have enough evidence to prove that they are places associated to death or that she ha they are places that memories are attached to. But if it's significant to her, won't there be memories attached to it? Um, that is true, but then does she give you, does she say, um, does she say that there's a memory, like say, oh, and I used to play there as a child, I would go there on the weekend. Does she like attach a memory to it? Or does she just uh, mention yeah. these places? She just mentioned it. Exactly. So the best answer is the broadest one, which is they are of significance to her. Thank you. No problem. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, guys, is do you remember how last lesson I, we talked about selecting between answers that were very close to one another? And when it comes to that, you want to pick the answer that is the broadest because it holds all the other little answers within it. Yeah. A lot of the question sets yeah. this week uh, or in Mox 3 had those um very broad answers with the correct answer this time. All right, Abia, question. Um, Abia? Oh, sorry, that's my hand up from last time. I'm All right, really sorry. no problem. Dhanav, question for comprehension. Same here, a question from last time. All right, no problem. Um, Ariana, question? Um, yes, guys, I do make a comprehension question, so you can blame me for all the mistakes and the marking key things that occur within it. Why does the author oh. mention? All right, uh, question 25 is the last one that I'm going to do, but again, remember, I don't know what it is, so if you want me to do 25, you're going to need to put the set that it's in and what question within that set that it is. Um, but very quickly, while whoever was asking what question 25 was, is typing that up, uh, I wanted to go through the things that you can practice in the next few weeks that are pretty much things that can improve quite quickly when you're practicing them. If you feel like you're like, oh, my creative writing, I need to practice that. Oh, my God. Okay. So with narrative openings, there's something that's very, very, very easy to practice, and they're very easy to put together. It is a good way to engage your audience because you are forced to use descriptive language um, and um, you provide very minimal context and it forms quite a good narrative opening, okay? Now, narrative openings, I should replace that and say that they are the introductions. Um, they are the introductions to your narrative, pretty much, okay? And they're one of the easiest things to improve. I talk about hooks being a form of instant engagement, but no, this is even better when it comes to extending that engagement, your narrative openings. A lot of people will shove the context of their characters. They'll say things like, Harry was successful. Harry hated his brother. Harry had a bad day at school. I don't want to know that. Stop summarizing these things. And I actually show me it be creative character because that's going to show me Maria what, tracking um, what kind of person they are what's actually happening you want to draw me into the setting Maria oh, blanks that were watching and posters that looked like they had been there for decades upon decades. Maria, and you're glitched. Looked just the yep, same. You're frozen. I'm Maria. Be drawn in by the description. So again, you're glitching. Now you're glitched. Should be a very good place to begin. You're glitched, Maria. Maria, you're glitched. Improvement. Now to opening. Not Maria. Maria. 
Maria, you're glitching. You're glitching. Well, yeah, you're know. glitching, Maria. Maria, you're glitching. A lot. You haven't moved a single millimeter. Really help Wi-Fi. Wait, Maria's not in here anymore. Wait, Maria's not here. It's if someone yeah. else is the host. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just someone called Gayatri. Like my yeah. Gayatri yeah. is the host now. That's superb. Um, Gayatri, can you please? Oh, Gayatri, can you please transfer the host back to me? But if not, it's okay. I'm just gonna keep going with the lesson. I'm. It is quite stormy, so connection is not fantastic. I do apologize that things have been pretty disruptive today. Okay. Anyways, um, I would suggest that you screen narrative opening. It's happening again. Um, how do I do it? Uh, plus more, 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 and then uh, meeting settings, more, um, meeting, more meeting settings, and then it should say, uh, change house or something. Oh. Got it. I'm just so trying. What, what do you need? All right, that's okay. I'm gonna keep going, Gatri. You figure it out. It's all good. Um, but pretty much, um, I would suggest that you guys screenshot the example of the narrative opening. It is exaggerated so that you can understand how to use um, descriptive language and figurative language in your introduction, and as well as how to draw your reader in quite quickly. Okay. Once you've screenshotted that, I am gonna move down. So I'm gonna give you guys like five. So. It's happening again. You're glitching, Maria. Oh, glitch! Oh, this is rough. You are glitching. All right. You're well, not whole the connection was red. So oh. you're still glitching, kind of. <laughs> so bad. Oh, Should we end this class here? Oh, glitching. How about no, my, um? How many minutes? How about no uh, guy three? Uh, you leave, and then Maria might be the host or something, and then okay. Leave. Yeah, sure. <laughs> My All right, am I back? Am I back? Yes. All right, no. I might end up. Okay, I might end up. Uh, ending. She's still, she's still the host. Oh, superb! All right, thank you guys. I might end up well, ending the class a little earlier because um, I might end up just ending it earlier because of the connection. It's not great and I don't want to um, make it worse for you guys. Gatri, thank you so much for your help. That was very, very, very impressive. Okay, so number two is I'm not seeing enough appropriate vocab in your stories. I'm still seeing very basic vocab like happy and sad. So please guys practice your year six vocabulary if you are still, you know, you don't have the foundation of year six vocabulary or even just <coughs> That is very achievable. You can learn vocabulary in a short period of time. Okay, the next thing is have a strategy for writing. Now, a lot of people already have this, which is very impressive. I didn't, and I wish somebody had told me to plan, okay? It would have made me way less stressed on the day. Now, I'm not sure what the best planning strategies are to maximize your time, but I do know that you should save uh, well, actually, that's a lie. Um, I do. I think that you should save time for planning and editing, and the majority of the time should be spent on writing. Okay. Maria? So, uh, yes. Um, when I plan, I just use dot points and like write it. But even though it may not make sense in my plan, but make sure in my um actual writing, I make sure that it's um nice and perfect. That's good. I would actually recommend you you plan out the beginning and the conflict and the resolution just to give you direction on where to take your narrative. Could not because not a lot of people know how to conclude properly. Okay. So, um, pretty much. Yes. Okay. Again, have a strategy. If anybody has a good strategy, can you put it in the chat in terms of how they break their time up or what strategy they have for the planning or the editing process? And yes, 
You are not allowed to skip the editing process. I highly recommend you save a minute to scan through and correct any basic spelling mistakes or punctuation mistakes. Um, hey, have I done gate? I did do the gate exam. Yes, I did. I bombed the maths and my English was not as subpar as I thought it was going to be. So yes, I have done gate. Um, or the Maria. What high school did you go to? I ended up going to Willerton, but not under gate. Um, da, da, da. Harry, who's asked who who asked me a question? Was it Pradika? Did you get um into the gate program two hundred and ten plus? <laughs> yes, I did. I've had this conversation, and every time I have it, one of you judges me so hard. So my mum, pretty much, just to summarize, so that we don't ask this question again, I got into gate, and I pretty much chose not to do it. I went into the art scholarship instead because I love to paint and draw and finger paint. Okay. End of questions. So moving on, Wait. the next thing that we have is the show don't tell policy pretty much, okay? Show don't tell forces you to be more descriptive. I want you to describe their emotions, but tell me their feelings, okay? Such as she felt pity for her friend. You don't need to describe to me that she felt something for somebody else. But if it's her emotions, you can show me that through her body language. Her jaw was black, her eyes were puffy, her fingers were clenching into the desk. That's like halfway between anger and like sadness. So E2C. Uh, and this part, I would suggest you screenshot so you can take the time to read through it properly. Okay. How do you uh, screenshot? <laughs> depends on what you're on. All right. If you're on a uh, tablet, there is a different, I guess, process to it. If you're on an iPad, I'm pretty sure. I'm it's on a tablet. Oh, you're on a tablet? I know uh, how to do it. Okay, so pretty much with this, I when I was, you know, so rudely kicked out by my own connection, um, the file size is okay. So I, I'll end up passing this one on to Melbourne tonight, but the other ones do need to be rewritten and like put into probably like a PDF or whatever because it's just too big to send an email. Anyways, you did, did, did. let's go through the questions unless anybody has a hand up or anything. Oh, well, there's five people. Okay, uh, Ariana, question? Oh, I just asked you that how to screenshot it. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm not going to be the best with that. Neelam, question. Um, I have two questions. Can I ask them? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Go for it. Um, firstly, um, at the actual gate exam, um, will you have to show your planning as well? No, you absolutely do not have to. The planning is to make sure that you are not write, writing without purpose, that you're not just rambling and creating a pretty bad narrative, pretty much. Um, so, yes, planning has a purpose. It gives you direction. What's your second question, Neelam? Um, I'll send it in the chat. So. Awesome. All right, next question then, while Neelam puts that in the chat. Amber Ray? Oh. <laughs> Um, Amber? She's muted. All right. Um, ask to unmute. While Amber figures that one out, Aaron, you're next. Uh, yeah. Um, Maria? Yeah? If we've got time, could you go through um, question 20 in the mock test? Um, Aaron, do, do we remember that I don't know yes. what question 20 is? Can you say what the question is? Yeah. It's um in the... Well, why are examples important as... Deals? Whoa, 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 whoa. Just let Aaron say it. Nobody else needs to say the question. Aaron, what is it? Why are examples important as... So A is they are all respected individuals. Oh, Aaron, B the is they B. Have it should be all of the above. There's not all of the above. Ah, okay. I have a different question set. So um, can you please go through it again? Oh, is it the exceed is exceeding no. expectations an answer there? What? It should be C. It should be C. They exceeded uh, expectations. Yeah, there is. It's there. Okay, then that yeah, is the answers. Aaron, the answer is that they exceeded typical expectations. Oh, okay. All right. 
Um, Navazish question, and then Jonathan after Navazish. Um, for for the two the tale of two frogs. Mm -hmm. Question two: What can the simultaneous idea be referred to as? Um, what's the answer for that one? It should be a coincidence. Like, do we know what a coincidence is? Like, a coincidence is, like, yeah. something that happens. Yes. Like, it's yes. a remarkable occurrence um, where circumstances oh seem to be, like, with intent but actually aren't. So it's like, wow, this happened to both of us at the same time. What a shock. It's not planned out or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And also for question three. Um, okay. I think that's what the M. Or you can stick your hand back up, and Jonathan, you're going to go now. I didn't mean to. Oh, that's okay. Um, Nishad? Um, Maria, uh -huh. do you have any um, brainstorm techniques, like when you're writing, like brainstorming? Brainstorm for what do you mean? To come up with good ideas? Yeah. See, I never brainstormed before a narrative because I would practice my plots beforehand. So I would know what I would write for certain plots. What I would do was a, um, pretty much a daily exercise uh, every day. So I might have like seven or eight words such as pillow, feather, bird, butterfly, uh, hope, rage, anguish. And pretty much what I would do is I'd write down a plot for each of those uh, word prompts. So that when I saw them in a picture or an image, I would have a plot ready to go. That's how I practiced it. So oh. I'll write it down for you pretty much. So what I did was I'd have words like pillow, feather, anguish, anger, hunger. And then I would write a plot idea down each time. That would be my brainstorm, but I would do it before the test. I never, ever brainstormed on the day of the test. It takes up too much time. Oh, uh, okay. Thanks, Maria. That's okay. If, I know that's not very helpful for on the day, but if I think of anything next week, I'll let you know, okay? Okay. All right, superb. The next one is... Um, Neelam, you still have your hand up, but I'll come back to you. Abia, question. I don't know why, but I raised my hand down. I don't know why it's still up. That's okay. Um, anybody else have a question? Okay, Jonathan, your, your hand's still up, but I'm assuming you don't actually have a question. Uh, Ariana, question? Um, can I screenshot this thing, like the um, all the previous pages? Yeah, but also I'm going to put it in the WhatsApp later. Well, Melvin will. So if you don't want a screenshot, it'll be put in there if that's easier. Maria? Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Will everything be put on the WhatsApp thingy? Uh, who's asking? Um, Pradika? Oh, Pradika, hey. I actually don't know when everything will be because a couple of things need to be reformatted. I'm sorry, let me just mute everyone very quickly. But Pradika, yeah, I'm not sure when everything will. I will try to put the smaller size files in, uh, send that to Melvin as soon as I can. But besides that, I, um, I'm not too sure, okay? Um, if there is a topic that we have gone through that you would like the notes on, put it in the chat and I'll make them my priority. That is pretty much to everyone. Uh, if it's the comprehension strategy, let me know. I think that those ones can be sent today. Um, do I think that you will get an ex get extra marks if you add a moral or a meaning? Yes, you will get extra marks if you add a moral or a meaning, but you will get marks taken away if you put the moral at the end. So a lot of people will have like, a decent narrative, right? Let's pretend that the squiggle is the narrative. And then right at the end, they'll do something like this, moral, X, Y, Z, and this will be their moral. 
And you will lose marks for that. If I was your marker, I would take marks away. I do not want to be told, again, this is a show, not tell policy as well. I do not want to be told what the moral is. I want to come to the conclusion, oh, this story was about hope and overcoming your fear or something like that, okay? Do not tell me, let me come to that conclusion. So Nishal, I hope that answers your question for you. Um, do, 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 let me go through the questions on the chat. Uh, Bupinda's iPhone, what's your question? Um, so since like, and we can we do, like do it and so like um so after like you write all the narrative don't do like the more and the colon but like just write like he learned that it's not nice to hit people, like mm -hmm. but like not a separate thing but like in the narrative. No, you see, I struggle with that as well because again, I should be told. I shouldn't have to be told what he learned. We shouldn't be writing stories like that. If anything, the audience should always be allowed or given the space to make those assumptions, to make to draw those conclusions. You should be using your language or your narrative techniques, I should say, to allow your audience to draw conclusions rather than to throw the conclusions in their face. It reduces the interest because everything is given to them. I actually read a very interesting story recently. It was very uncompleted. It was only two paragraphs, but it was probably the most two engaging paragraphs I have ever read in my whole entire life. And I was so devastated that this person hadn't finished the story. But one of the things that they did was they allowed me to consider. Sorry, everybody. There was like You're a glitch. You're glitching, Maria. I'm glitching. All right. I'm pretty much going to end up wrapping up the class then if we're still having problems. But the point is what really engaged me about this story is the fact that I was able to draw so many conclusions and to ask questions to be like, oh my God, what happens next? Who is this character? Why are they mistreating her? Why is she mistreating someone? There were so many questions I had that were based off these two paragraphs, which is why it was so engaging. Okay. So don't ever throw the moral at the audience's face or what the person has learned. Let them come to it naturally. All right. A bunch of questions. For you? Um, okay. Someone just yelled out. Go ahead. Whose was it? Whose was it? Oh, no, they're not with Loyola. All right, uh, Advik, you're next. Um, for the, um, for the moral thing, can you say if you're, like, writing about confidence, can you, like, after write about Luke knew, like, he knew that if he had confidence, he could do everything with that? Would that lose marks or? No, you see, because that's see, it's such a fine line because you're not saying, and this is what he learned. You're saying it in a natural way. So as long as you don't say, and this is what he learned, I'm okay with, with whatever you choose to put down. And the way you worded that was actually very nice. It was good syntax. So well done, Anvik. Thanks. All right. Uh, Ovia, question? Um, when you write stories, um, can you add quotes in? You can, but as long as it doesn't disrupt the flow of your writing and the quotes make sense to your, the theme or whatever idea you're going with. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, Dion, you're next. Um, for our resolution, um, how can we, if we don't have that much time and it's like, like, the end of like like you have like seven minutes or something um, how do you make a good um resolution the ending Oof. now that is a difficult difficult question because it depends on the narrative for me and the way that i wrote i was always able to reflect on human nature as my resolution i remember having this conversation with you guys a little bit after one of melbourne's sessions the first philosophy session where I said that my conclusions were mostly focused on human nature or the philosophy behind, um, behind the piece. But my human nature would reflect on the darker aspects of the narrative, um, such as what the scars had taught the detective or what the scars had taught um, humanity or how humanity had flaws that we needed to perceive in order to survive. I would always have a reflection on human nature. That's what I would do because that's how I would write. So I would make sure that whatever I wrote, I could come back to human nature. I was comfortable with that. What I would suggest is have a, a strategy to your resolution that works for you. If mine is human nature, yours might be an action scene. I don't know. But 
if you get good and you practice it, it's most likely going to come through for you on the day. I will probably run a lesson on the events in the narrative next week, and that should cover resolutions as well. Um, um, no for um, human nature, could you give me a, an example? What do you mean? Uh, an example of human nature? Yeah. Uh, that's a little bit hard. I'd actually have to write an example, but pretty much what I would say, I'll write it down and... Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, don't say uh bye bye, but remember don't just say bye into the chat or it will disrupt everyone else. <laughs> bye. Bye, Maria. In the chat, please. Bye. 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 Um, I could go on, but it would be a time problem. So that is what I would do in regards to a piece on human nature. You can't read my writing, let me know. Okay, um, Abia, question. Hi, um, Hashika, question. When you say you have to um, show, not tell, do you mean as in don't write on um, like exactly what you what you want the moral to be, but instead kind of um, like show it instead of exactly telling them straight away? Yes, in a way. Um, one of the things, I think I should be more explicit about what I mean. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to set up your moral like this. Or. Speaking of which, just to make sure you don't get confused, because I was leading into something else with that. With that. So I'm just going to get rid of my last line of this example, but I don't want you to put the moral or he learned that unless you've been practicing uh, at a year nine, year eight level, okay? So I'm sure that you guys um, will understand. If you are doing it this way, I suggest you stop. And I suggest you focus more on showing me through the character's actions that they have learned a lesson or yeah. the things that they say. That would be more important. So focus on dialogue and action would be a good one in terms of showing morals, okay? Okay. No problem. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. I would say there are other questions. Harry's iPad. But if you guys don't have any other questions, the lesson is over. I will stay in the end to, like, take other questions. But besides that, enjoy your evening. And thank you for being so patient today. Um, Abia, you put your hand up again. So Maria, um, this is, th I haven't raised my hand up accidentally, just to assure you. But um, my, my question is that in the mock exam, I really focus on my time and not my comprehension. And most of the time I worry about like, oh, I've got 35 minutes and these uh, how many comprehensions I have. Oh no, what am I going to do? So do you have any tips on how I can get my mind on that or how I can pr improve on this? And okay, lose so you, you feel like you spend too much time with uh, like focusing on the time, right? Like, oh my Thank God, 25 minutes. Thank you right? your advice. Yeah. Um, Abia, is that what you're saying? You focus too much on the time? Yes, Maria. Um, I think I had, you know what, I'm not even going to lie to you. The last, when I, when Melvin told me, when I first was like, oh, gate tuition sounds interesting. Um, when I first joined and he was like, you know, it's 25 minutes, right? And I was like, oh my God. Um, because I just kept thinking, did I have to write my narrative in 25 minutes? And did, how did I do that? Um, 
pretty much I practiced so that I could teach you guys how to do this properly. And I did also, I struggled a lot with the time in terms of like, oh my God, 25 minutes, how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? What I did was I remembered how much I enjoyed writing. And this only worked for me. It might not work for you. Is there something about creative writing you really like? Uh, yes, my um, story prompt, like what I would write. You like that, right? So you like focusing on the prompt, right? Do you like it because yeah. you're, you're, you want to share it? You want to show people it? Because I like it. When I think of something interesting, I'm like, I will write the narrative out and I'll run to my mom and I'll be like, look, mom, look. And I still do that. I'm in uni. I'm like, look, just to rub it in her face a little bit. Um, but if pretend, almost be like, oh my God, I'm going to show this to someone and start writing. Pick anything that you enjoy about the narrative and have intense, insane focus on it. If it is interpreting the metaphor, be like, okay, I must make sure that I interpret it. And when I start writing, I'm going to make sure that everything comes back to the interpretation. Bye. Um, but it'd be a, one of the good things that you should do is thank you for asking that. Because what I'll do is uh, I think Melvin told you that Jenny and I will be running the test taking skills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. I will make sure that I have a special section in there for time pressure just for you, okay? Okay, thank you a lot, of Maria. That is no problem. Enjoy the school week, okay? Maria? Uh, yes, pretty good. What do you think about writing a poem? I think not to. Um, <laughs> I am so adamant on that. I cannot be more clear on not writing a poem unless you have been practicing. The only reason I say not to is a lot of people write literally when they write poetry. But one of the things you must remember about poems is every single line you write in a poem must be interpretive. It must be something for the audience to interpret. So if you are writing about a feeling, a good idea would be to personify that feeling, to make it an animal, to make it a human being, something that I can follow around and see where it goes. And not a lot of people can do that. And not a lot of people can learn how to do that in a short period of time. If you have been doing it and you've been getting like 50 out of 50, uh, anything above 30, then keep doing it because clearly it's working for you. If you're not doing too well for it now, strategically, it would be a good idea to stick to what you're good at um right now if that makes sense Paduka. I just asked because in my previous class mm -hmm. I arrived like 15 minutes late uh -huh. and personally I thought it was easier for myself to write a poem oh because you you it, with the time constraint you're like right I'm gonna whack it out I get you. I would do that too. I'm not even going to lie because 15 minutes is not a lot of time to nail something. But do you know how to like how to interpret the prompt and then use the prompt as a metaphor in a poem? Do you think that that is something you know how to do? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you wrote a poem and you end up doing well in it, like above 30, stick with poetry or on the side, practice your poetic devices, practice personifying your um, feelings into animals, into people, into whatnot, okay? Because that's going to create interest. That's going to separate you from the crowd. I don't recommend it, but if you are doing well with it, I am not going to discourage you. And I love poetry. I'm a big fan of poetry. Um, anyways, so uh, I hope that answers your question, Pradika. Four other people have their question, their hands up. So um, Andrea, question. Um, if you had time, could you please like write a story that would um, get good marks on GATE so that we could learn from it? Uh, Andrea, actually in GATE prep book number one that I did, there are two example stories in there already. And I sent Melvin GATE prep book uh, last term's one, which has a whole bunch of narrative openings for you guys to look at. I unfortunately don't think I'll have the time to write out a full 25 minute narrative again, but I will try my, oh, actually, you know what? It's just 25 minutes of my week. If I could, yep. You know what? I'll try my best, Andrea, but no promises. Um, Ovia question is it okay if I ask one of the English questions for this mock exam three of course you can yeah go for it it's comprehension called Pandora the Pandora's box okay yeah. awesome which can you read out the question for me yeah it's question 11 and it's um the question is how was Pandora made a Hephaestus Hermes Athena and Aphrodite work together. 
Ovia, I think I can help you with this one. So okay. do you remember last week I said when we have questions that are, when we have answers that are very, very close to one another, you wouldn't be able to necessarily always distinguish which one is correct? Yeah. The best strategy is to pick the broadest answer. So around C or D, there should be a answer that says the gods, uh, a whole bunch of gods gifted her with a whole bunch of gifts, something along those lines. Yeah. What's the, can you read the broadest answer out for me? Um, is it in C or D? It should be, it should be towards the end. I'm sorry, I don't have the set in front of me. Okay, I have a feeling it might be various gods, goddess contributed particu particular qualities to construct her. Perfect. Is Do you notice how that's very broad? It doesn't give any specifics? Yeah. That's the best answer that you can choose for those kind of questions, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. No problem. Any other questions? Nope, I'm assuming not. Nishad, you're the last hand, and then the lesson is done. Uh, Maria, it's for writing. Um, oh, if for you it. don't have time and you only have like 10 minutes left and you're still up to your conclusion, like all your problem. Mm -hmm, your conflict, yeah. Yeah, and if you're writing in like a perspective of an animal or anything, and um, is it okay if you make like your main character to die? Not like um, Ooh, that. See the cop. The thing that they don't like with the gate markers, especially any marker, even me. I do not like it when the main character dies in short stories because it shows that you haven't planned your plot out properly. There must be sequence and there must be a proper beginning and a resolution. I suggest when you're writing Nishad is to actually figure out what your, I know that you said your name wasn't Nishad, right? Um, but I apologize. Uh, is to figure out what your resolution is first. Uh, a good strategy sometimes, and this might work for you, is to actually write a basic conclusion at the end, something that you can like come back to pretty much and add to. So write that down first and then begin with your introduction, your rising action, falling action. Yeah, but I'm um, like, In the middle? not like um, I fell over a twig and died, but like, um, can we like describe it like um, everything went black? No, not at all. For me, the equivalent to that would have um, pretty much been at the time uh, they would say to be continued, dot, dot, dot. They would recommend that, but then you would end up losing marks because it shows that you didn't plan your narrative properly. You didn't, you know, work within the time constraints. It will affect your marks, but if you absolutely must, then it's better to have something than it is to have nothing, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, Maria, thanks. All right, no problem. All right, guys, that is it for today. I am hungry, I am sick, and I am blind, and I'd like to go eat something. So if anybody has any other questions, now's the time to scream it out. Otherwise, please enjoy your week, and I will see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.